Now in the previous video I showed uh, the interaction and uh, relations between the main components of a direct drive solar propulsion system. In this video I will zone in on the relationship between the solar panel and in particular a direct drive brushed DC motor. I'll do some actual tests using this motor and this panel which is roughly 3 watt and from the results we'll see if we can determine whether this is indeed a good match and uh, to save you the suspense it's not but uh, understanding why it's not is important and uh, in the next video I'll explain how you can remedy that. Right the first test will be with a small brush DC motor all I have is a pinion and I'm using a photoreflective diode to pick up this white piece of tape and that will give us a reading in Hertz multiply that by 60 to get RPM this reading here is the open circuit voltage from the solar panel and this will be the current through the system if I short out the panel that gives us the short circuit current available from the panel you'll see there's still a residual voltage that's purely to drive the current through all the remaining resistance in the circuit all the alligator contacts etc and we can fire this up Right, so that will be a typical no-load scenario. The motor is drawing a bit of current that is to overcome internal friction. And uh, you can see there is a slight drop in voltage as the panel starts to deliver some current. Right, this is our next test. This is to simulate a load on the motor. This is just a plastic flywheel also with a small piece of reflective tape so that we can capture the rotational velocity. I've readjusted the solar panel so I'm just going to recapture the output that's obviously open circuit voltage and uh, let's test short circuit current. in about 160 million okay let's get going notice how the voltage first drops off and then starts climbing again as the motor speeds up that's because of the initial inertia of the flywheel uh, presenting torque and uh, allowing more current to flow at the lower rpm and we are going to add a load and then uh, we can then record the various values at different intervals and see how that presents a power output graph for the solar panel. These are the results. Uh, for the first test I deliberately angled the solar panel away from the sun. Uh, that was to keep the output current below 200 milliamps and it allowed me to take very accurate readings um, using a cheap multimeter. Uh, the power over here is normalized so it's not the absolute power but current and voltage is correct this would be the short circuit current and this would be the open circuit voltage and depending on the amount of load on the motor you can see how starting at open circuit voltage 
that would be the point where the motor was spinning very fast and uh, only turning the pinion and then using the larger plastic wheel uh, as you apply torque more and more current is being drawn now at any point on this graph the amount of power available from the solar panel is really just the area under that rectangle that's because this point represents voltage and current and that equals power and you can clearly see from this power curve where the maximum point occurs the actual power turned out to be 1.13 watt and the voltage was uh, around about 8 volts now I also went ahead and uh, recorded values uh, in full sun and here I have the two graphs this is the data for the first test and then uh, to scale the second test using full sun uh, like once again the power is not the absolute value it's just uh, normalized so that you can get an idea of how they compare but once again with uh, full sun maximum power was around 2,87 watt one thing to notice is that there's practically no difference in the open circuit voltage as a matter of fact due to the higher temperature in full sun the open circuit voltage actually drops now to get the motor specifications we need to take a few measurements uh, I want to work out the torque constant and uh, for that I need to measure the torque at different current levels um, each case would be stall torque um, so that's not truly accurate I'm not taking into account internal friction but it's the best I can do and it's easy to just switch on the panel I can measure 0.41 amps and I can measure 3.2 grams downforce on the scale and by measuring that lever arm I can work out the torque I won't record this for every test case I'll just summarize the points in a spreadsheet later the next motor constant that I'm interested in is the kV value and I'll be getting an estimate of that by measuring the RPM and comparing that to the applied voltage and to vary the voltage and get different readings to make sure that I've got a constant I'll be shading some part of the solar panel and uh, by limiting the amount of power the motor itself will pull the voltage down and uh, we can measure the RPM from there Okay, this is the results from testing stall torque and you can see there's a very nice linear relationship between torque and uh, current which is exactly what you would expect because a typical brushed DC motor would have a torque constant and that gives you the relationship uh, between current and torque and uh, also the results from testing speed and voltage once again linear and that's because these two variables are related uh, by the kV value now from the video in which I did this test you would notice that the 
uh, residual current is almost constant. There's a small change uh, between low speed where the current is somewhere around 30 milliamp and at high speed it was around 39 milliamp. That current over there is really just to provide torque that is necessary to overcome the internal friction of the motor without it being loaded. The KV value which is really just this slope came out to about 1050 RPM per volt. I can work out the slope for a torque constant as well and that came to 6.8 millinewton meter per amp. Now knowing this torque constant I can calculate the torque at any point as long as I know what the current draw was because that constant is constant regardless of voltage. So at a particular point I can work out the torque which is simply the torque constant multiplied by the current. Once I know the torque I can work out the power because I have the rotational velocity and it is simply torque multiplied by rotational velocity. Uh, if you want to calculate that directly from the values as measured, that would be millinewton meter multiplied by RPM multiplied by pi over 30. And that will give you a power output in milliwatt. Once I know the power output, I can compare that to the power input because I also have that, the power input from the solar panel, and I can work out the motor efficiency as the motor power divided by the panel power. Right now we set out initially to determine the compatibility between the motor and the solar panel to see if it's a good match driving one directly and uh, here you can see I've got the normalized panel power so I can get maximum power and I've got that plotted against velocity and on this graph I have normalized motor efficiency and you can see that motor efficiency is actually ridiculously low at panel maximum power. And another graph with which we can illustrate that, since most motor graphs use torque as the variable on the x-axis, uh, and power and everything else on the y-axis. I've once again created normalized curves. Uh, blue graph is normalized motor efficiency. So uh, once again, high efficiency in some operating conditions, but at that condition, the panel is generating very little power. This pink curve is the actual motor power, and it is really just the product of the blue graph multiplied by the orange graph. This is maximum power for the panel and what we want to do is align that with the maximum power from the motor and if those two are aligned then automatically the pink graph would be at an absolute possible maximum. Now this pink curve which is power and I've got torque on the x-axis already represents the basic shape that you expect from most spec sheets uh, as supplied by some DC motors where you have power and torque and you get 
a nice symmetric curve with maximum power pretty much at 50% uh, of maximum torque. The difference between these two is that this is at a constant voltage whereas the graph that we generated over here happened at different voltages for each point. So in the next video I'll take this motor and I'll characterize it and generate these curves at constant voltages. We already know the essential constants, the torque constant, the KV value, that will not change but uh, we'll generate these curves using constant voltage and from that I'll show you how you can reduce the calculations to a few very simple rules of thumb and uh, estimate the point of maximum efficiency and calculate the correct voltage at which that will correspond to your solar panel and making sure that it's a good match.